Welcome back. I'm the Intense MD, a double board certified intensivist, here to give you an inside look into the intensive care unit. If you missed my video last week, we started discussing liver failure. I discussed what the liver does and what are some signs, symptoms, and causes of liver failure. Today, we're gonna to talk about the complications of liver failure and the treatment. So if you missed the first video, you can watch it here, but if you did, let's get into it. So as I said, we're gonna discuss the complications of liver failure. And if you recall from the last video, I talked about what the liver does. So when the liver is starting to have injury and failure, some of the processes aren't working as well, and it can lead to these complications. As I said at the end of the prior video, cirrhosis is the scarring of the liver. This is when there is so much damage to the liver, it starts to scar and shrink. So cirrhosis is when you're heading into end-stage liver disease. So cirrhosis has quite a few complications. One, as I talked about in the symptoms, is jaundice. This is the yellowing of the eyes and the skin. Two is ascites. This is fluid buildup in the abdomen. People with liver failure and siege liver failure can end up accumulating fluid in their abdomen, and this becomes very uncomfortable and can also cause difficulty breathing for the patient. So they may require a procedure called a paracentesis, which is drainage of this fluid. Since one of the liver's jobs is to remove toxins from the body, if it's not functioning as well, it might have a buildup of toxic substances, which can lead to hepatic encephalopathy. This is confusion from toxins building up and having an effect on the brain. So many times patients who have liver failure or cirrhosis can have some confusion or they might also become very sleepy. There are some medications that we give the patient that help bind these toxins and help remove the toxins from the body another way to prevent this confusion. Cirrhosis also increases the risk of liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma. Portal hypertension is a process that happens in liver failure. This is when the blood pressure in the veins that carry blood from the intestines to the liver becomes abnormally high. This can result in a complication called varices. Many times people with advanced liver disease might have esophageal or gastric varices. This is some bulging of the veins and they bleed more easily. So people who have liver disease might come in throwing up blood or having a GI bleed due to these things. There are some treatments for this. Sometimes they will put a band over it or inject it to try to prevent it from re-bleeding. But there is also a procedure called a TIPS where an interventional radiologist tries to redirect flow to decrease the pressure in that system. Esophageal and gastric varices can be life-threatening. It can cause a patient to bleed to death. Speaking of bleeding, coagulopathy is when the blood is not able to clot properly. This can lead to a tendency to bleed or uncontrollable bleeding. If we see a patient with liver disease has coagulopathy, a lot of times people with liver failure and stage liver disease have very deranged coags when we measure them in the lab. So we might give them some blood products or other medications to try to help with clotting so somebody doesn't bleed to death. Malnutrition is another complication of liver disease and liver failure since the liver helps with nutrition and it also stores a lot of vitamins and minerals. When it's unable to do its job, then it can lead to a patient being malnourished. So how do we treat liver disease? Like I had mentioned previously, a lot of the complications of liver disease have specific treatments. Sometimes a patient might have to get routine paracentesis to mitigate their symptoms and discomfort from fluid accumulating in their body. They might have to take certain medications to help with the processes that the liver is no longer able to do, such as clearing some of the excess toxins from the body so it does not lead to hepatic encephalopathy. A lot of it is supportive care. We want to treat the underlying problem and prevent the liver disease from progressing. Many times this comes with a recommendation of avoiding any substances that directly impact the liver, such as alcohol, Tylenol, other drugs that are metabolized by the liver. If somebody's liver disease is 
very severe, they might qualify for an organ transplant, and I will talk about liver transplant in my next video. There is a type of life support called MARS, or Molecular Adsorbent Recirculating System. Think of it as dialysis for the liver. This is used on very rare occasions, usually in a liver-specific ICU, and it is typically used to bridge someone to a liver transplant. It is not something that is used on a daily basis in people with chronic liver disease. The way it works is it uses albumin to remove the albumin-bound toxins from the body to try to assist the liver in doing its job. How can we prevent liver disease? Well, one is avoiding substances that directly affect and injure the liver, such as alcohol and other drugs. Two is trying to maintain a healthy diet where you are not having excess calories or fat that can lead to hepatocytosis or fatty liver disease. Three is getting vaccinated against the viral hepatitis that can cause acute or chronic liver failure. And if you do have hepatitis, there are treatments available. In the United States, hepatitis B is the most common that we vaccinate against. The vaccine starts at birth. If you're traveling to a country where hepatitis A is endemic, it's recommended to get the hepatitis vaccine as well. Of course, it's important to know your family history and if you have any genetic predisposition to liver disease and liver failure. Thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know which organ system you want to hear about next. Next week, we're going to talk about liver transplant. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more about the intensive care unit and organ failure.